Good evening, First Baptist Church family. Thank you so much for joining us for this time of Wednesday spiritual formation. As we look at the intersection between Scripture, which our Scripture text for today comes from Ezekiel 34, and art, uh, please, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel 34. We're going to read verses 11 through 16 and then jump to verses 20 through 24. And as always, we will be reading from the New Revised Standard. Sean, if you will read our passage for us this evening. Please, <clears throat> please turn with me to Ezekiel 34, starting in verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses. And in all the inhabited parts of the land, I will feed them with good pasture and the mountains heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Now to verse 20. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. John, Ezekiel is not a book that we often visit, so it's important when we study uh, these uh, really rare books in Scripture that we know the, the background, what's going on behind the text, which enables us to properly in, interpret the passage. But in the chapter before um, this chapter, so chapter 33, the prophet Ezekiel tells us about the fall of Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This is the southern kingdom, uh, at this time, there were two kingdoms, Israel in the north, Judah in the south. Judah is destroyed and taken into Babylonian exile. That happens 586, 587. They were in exile for 50 years. What Ezekiel says at the beginning of chapter 34, he talks about false shepherds. And he says, look, you've had all of these terrible kings because you insisted on having an earthly king and, and, and God said you didn't need an earthly king. God was going to be your king. But all of these terrible leading kings just took you down the wrong path. And now look at where you are. You're in shambles. The temple is gone. You're, you're taken into exile. So in this particular passage of Scripture, Ezekiel allows God to speak and Essentially, God says, I, I want to be your king. I want to be your shepherd. And, and we learn in, in this passage of Scripture the kind of king that God is going to be to the people. So, so give us the attributes of this kind of king that God wants to be for his people. Uh, one of the big ones I think that's mentioned here is um, gathering people from all over. Uh, so bringing people back in that have been dispersed and, and uniting them together. Uh, he says that he will feed them uh, on the mountains and by the water courses. Uh, and it says that um, they will have good grazing land. So he's not just going to give them what they need. He's going to give them the good land. He's going to give them the good water. Um, so he's taking care of them uh, physically. He said he's going to make them lie down. Uh, he will seek the lost, bring back the strayed, bind up the injured, uh, strengthen the weak. So all of these things that we see of a people group who has been destroyed by human culture and human nature, 
God is saying, I can fix that. I will fix that. That's going to be how I rule over you. It was just a couple of weeks ago that we talked about um, servant leadership. Mm -hmm. And servant leadership uh, is uh, based in this, uh, is grounded in this idea of leading like a shepherd. So we look at the, the text that we often turn to the most when we talk about servant leadership is John 10 because it describes the good shepherd and the mm -hmm. good shepherd knows his sheep and the sheep know him and, and, and they know his voice. He knows them by name. So there's this intimate relationship that the sheep have with the shepherd. Um, you and I, uh, we, um, we try with all of our might to, to lead like servants. So we want to be those servant leaders who enjoy an intimate relationship with you who are part of our, our flock. Um, we want to know you. We want you to know us. We don't want to lead dictatorially, mm -hmm. but, but we want to, to guide and direct and comfort. Um, is that not what Ezekiel describes here of the kind of king slash shepherd that God wants to be for his people? How... How is this model of leadership different from many CEO models of leadership that we see in the world? And we talked about this a few weeks ago as well. I think that the big thing is uh, this type of leadership is willing to go to their people. They're willing to walk alongside their people. And, and if somebody in the church is struggling, um, I am willing to be there with them and to come to them where they're at instead of a lot of times in the business world, a CEO uh, is only going to be distant and they're going to say, hey, you're not doing this and this is what's expected instead of figuring out the why. Why are you struggling with this? How can I help and you? To me, that's the definition of a good leader. It's you're a problem solver mm -hmm. and you want to do whatever you can to help your people to succeed. Yeah. Uh, and that seems to be what you're describing is the shepherd that is, uh, that God identifies with this shepherd who is very in tune and in touch with his sheep. There, there's not, he, he's not a detached leader. Yeah. He's very incarnational, which is uh, the, the kind of God that we see in the person of Jesus Christ who is with us. What else do we see that the kind of uh, leader slash king that God wants to be for his people? I think provisional, again, is, is the big thing. Um, not only does he want to be there, not only does he want to be a problem solver and help them, uh, but like I mentioned a little bit ago, he wants to give them what they need and more. And so he's not just saying, I'm going to give you enough food to eat. He's saying, I'm going to give you good grazing land. Uh, you'll feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. Um, would, would you say that this is an upside down model of leadership? Oftentimes we, we talk about the kingdom of God being an upside down kingdom mm -hmm. where those at the bottom are lifted up and those at the top are brought down low. And, and this appears to be the sword of shepherd that God wants to be for Israel. Yeah. I mean, this is an upside down sort of leadership model where the people are first, the sheep come first. And rather than, as we have talked about, this detached relationship between the shepherd up here, the sheep down here, he, he wants to be incredibly incarnational. He wants to walk with his sheep and make sure they're cared for. Yeah. Uh, let, let's look at our, our painting. The painting is the Good Shepherd, Julian Dupree, who is a French artist. Um, what, what do you see in this painting um, that identifies with our scripture? Do you, do you see anything that you want to highlight? Yeah, again, um, pointing out the fact that the, the shepherd here is in the field with the sheep. They're not on a mountainside looking down over them. They're not So again, the, 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 distant. the theme of attachment, mm -hmm. of incarnational 
walking, guiding, not lording over. Yeah. But a shepherd who truly is in tune with, in, in this instant, her flock. Yeah. And again, you know, you look at this field and it's luscious. It's full of tall grass and, and it doesn't look like that it's dying or that they're struggling to find food. They've got everything they need. Because it's the shepherd who led them to that place. Yes. They couldn't have uh, just found that place on their own. The shepherd had to guide and direct. I, I think it's uh, important that uh, we are reminded. We have just uh, gotten out of an election cycle. We have a new president. And more often than not, we put all of our faith and trust in that leader. Mm -hmm. They're the king. They're going to save us from all that ails us. And as God had to remind his people in Ezekiel 34, I'm your one true shepherd. You have placed so much faith and trust in these men, and they just can't deliver because they're broken. But, but allow me to be your shepherd. And I think we're reminded or we should be reminded of this as, uh, as Americans. Even though we, we do cast a, a vote and we place a certain level of faith and trust in a president, our one true king is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially during these difficult days, uh, what not a better reminder than Ezekiel 34. God is the one true shepherd. Tom, will you close us in prayer? Sure. Please join me in praying. Father, we just thank you for being our shepherd, for being so willing to be hands-on in our lives, for not walking away from us and looking at us from afar. Father, we just pray that uh, as Kobe mentioned, that we would be reminded uh, that you are our shepherd and that our faith is in you and not of people of this world. God, people will fail us time and time again, but you are constant. We pray that uh, coming out of this election cycle and moving forward, uh, that you would just be ever present and that you would remind us um, that you are the one that we should hope in. You are the one that our faith is in. So God, we thank you for uh, giving us the ability to just read your scripture tonight, look at this painting, uh, and just talk about the ways that uh, we can use it in our lives uh, to guide us in our paths. Father, we pray all of these things in your name. Amen.